Hey adventurers, I am up in the northwest corner of California in Humboldt County and there are about a dozen different salamanders that live here. So we are going to try to find as many as we can this weekend. The first of which is actually right under here. Here he is. Check out this little guy. This is an Encetina, and we've seen these many, many times on the channel before because they are widespread throughout the entire state, basically everywhere except for the desert. One of the cool things about Encetinas is that they're very varied, and so if we found an Encetina in a different part of the state, it would look very different. But they're all one species, and they're in fact a ring species. So it's believed that the very first Encetina evolved uh, a little bit north of where we are, the painted Encetina. And then it spread out and changed as it ran into uh, slightly different habitats and environments. And so at the very southern portion of its range, it kind of forms this ring as it goes around the Central Valley. Now this is the Oregon Encetina. He is one of the plainest looking versions, but still pretty cool and I'm glad we got him to start off our adventure. Let's put him back and see what we can find next. One more Encetina for you, but I wanted to point this guy out. This is still an Oregon Encetina, but you can see there's a bit more pattern on him on the back and especially in the tail, a lot more color. And, oh, there he goes, but um, maybe you can even see it better now on the tail. But these guys are highly variable, and as we move further north, I think we're gonna see even more pattern on these guys. This is the perfect habitat for our second species. This is the home of the coast giant salamander. In fact, I found one here, but it is a larval, so it's itty, itty, bitty. Now this is our largest salamander, our largest terrestrial salamander in California and they can get up to 13 inches, so maybe about that big. So definitely a big salamander, and this guy will grow up to be that size. Now you can see in this form, their aquatic form, they have gills, uh, and they use that so they can breathe underwater. When they're adults, they'll go out on land, they'll lose those gills and spend the time in the wooded areas, but they'll come back to the creeks to breathe and to lay eggs. Hopefully I'll be able to show you a terrestrial one. I've got some places further north where I've had some luck. So let's go and see uh, what else is out there. That's two salamanders just down, maybe about 10 more to go. All right, check out this guy. This is another Encetina, but you can see he has a ton more pattern on him because uh, this is the painted Encetina as opposed to the Oregon Encetinas we saw before. Now I'm gonna put his log back right where it was <laughs> and uh, he'll have to make his way back under there. I'm gonna give him a little help, but you can see him up close, a lot more color um, because like I said, this is a separate subspecies, but we've seen a lot of Encetinas already, so We'll put him right back and continue on our way. Now species number three is in this beautiful redwood grove and it's right here. This is our California slender salamander and this is the smallest salamander out here, but of course it is among some of the biggest trees. Now these guys are really easy to identify because they are so pencil thin and there's really nothing else like them. Now in the state there are over 20 different species of slender salamanders, but up here in the northern coast of California this is the only one so very cool species number three off the list and we've hit all of the common species at this point uh, anything else is going to be a little bit rarer so we got a fingers crossed that we'll get some of those rare species um, as we explore today let's go all right so under this log here was this lovely salamander this is another one of those pacific uh, sorry, coast giant salamanders. Uh, they used to be Pacific, but they split them into multiple species. And so that's when we got the coast giant salamander. Now you can see this one is a lot bigger than that larva we had, but this is still not a full size adult. Look at this tail. It is really keeled. It's really meant to paddle through the water here. Um, but you can see he doesn't have any gills anymore. Uh, so I'm calling this like the teenager stage but we'll let him get back into uh, under his log and into all this damp, wet soil. 
Another Pacific giant salamander. So this is probably one of the most scenic salamander adventures that you can do. Just look at this canyon, tons of ferns and moss and just greenery everywhere. And of course, I'm hiking up a creek. Now, the southern torn salamander is one of my targets for this trip, and it loves habitat like this where there's permanent flowing uh, seepages. I haven't found one yet, and I've already been here for a couple hours, and it's already my second location that I've been looking at. So there's a chance that one won't be highlighted in this video, but I wanted to at least show you the habitat and what I've been spending doing um, because it really is gorgeous here. And uh, hopefully we'll get one. I've got another place to check out, maybe one other. So, uh, you know, fingers, fingers crossed. Areas like this really do pique my interest because there's a lot of flat logs to flip. Um, and they're all very damp. And so we should be able to find a salamander in here. Especially long ones like this. Should be great. Oh, and we've got one. Well, it's taken all day, but we finally have our fourth species of salamander. This is the Del Norte salamander, and it is one of the local specialties because it has such a small range. It's only really in Del Norte County. Um, it does extend a little bit to the bordering counties and also into that uh, south west corner of Oregon. It is not a very colorful salamander. This is actually the least colorful one that we've seen. You can see it is all black in color, no pattern on it. And that's one of the ways that we're actually able to identify it because there are some other darkly colored salamanders that do have patterns, but this one is clearly absent of all of that. Now this is one of the woodland salamanders. So we're not gonna be looking in creeks for this guy. Any of this damp area, especially where there's a lot of like moss that's growing or it's really damp are great for these salamanders and uh, their cousins. So excellent that we finally have my first lifer of the trip and the first regional specialty. So we still got time. So let's go see what else is crawling about. Go back under your log, bye. Whoa! Oh my god! This guy is huge! Okay, 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 okay. You need to check this guy out. Look at the size of the salamander. He is almost, uh, he's like with the tail extended, he would be about the size of my hand. It's huge! This is a new species for us as well. This is the Northwestern Salamander. Whoa. Okay. Okay. We're going to, we're going to take him out and take a closer look here. Okay. This guy is quite big for a salamander. It's one of our largest. It's not quite as big as those giant salamanders that we were um, talking about and seeing, but this is probably the second biggest. Now, easy to identify, uh, even though it doesn't have very many colorful markings. You can see it has these ridges on the side um, and also on the head, it has these enlarged parotid glands. Um, so they can look similar to the giant salamanders, except, especially if a giant salamander doesn't have a lot of pattern to it. We haven't seen a terrestrial adult yet, and we might, we might not find one on this trip, but they tend to have more sort of blotchy gray colors, so they can look similar. But this guy will definitely have those enlarged glands on the head and that ridging on the side. Very cool to find this uh, beautiful and big salamander. Now, remembering all of these field marks can be quite the challenge, which is why we built the Schechter Natural History's Guide to Reptiles and Amphibians. And so this app is available for both Android and iOS. And if I go back, I can show you, I was doing a search for Northwestern Salamander. And right here, we can see that we have a lovely illustration with highlighting the, the field marks, like those ridges on the side, for example. And we have detailed information along with a range map and it all works while you're offline. So no matter where you are, uh, you'll be able to figure out what kind of salamander this is. All right, time to say goodbye to salamander number five. Hi fella. Oh, nice. 
we have another one of these big old guys. Oh, and an Encetina. All right. That's cool. These two were under this log together. And just so you can see the difference, this is another one of those Northwesterns, the enlarged parotid glands, the ribs on the side. And this is a little Ancetina. You can see he's got a little bit of pattern in the tail, that orange at the joint of the legs. Um, Oregon and Satina, that's the subspecies. So, but <laughs> much different in size. So pretty cool that they're both hanging out here. And in fact, there's been uh, Encetinas under about half of those logs there. So this has end up being a really nice spot. All right, we'll put these guys back and keep on moving. All right, well, we just flipped up this salamander and this is another Del Norte salamander. And I don't know if it'll show up on the video, but you can see on the back there is a very, very faint uh, sort of brown stripe. Um, it looks fairly uniform, even with the naked eye, but looking close, I can see that there is a little bit of break on the side uh, to give it that pattern. So cool to get another one of those guys. We'll put them back and hopefully we can find our six species. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, look right here. This is a salamander. Oh, a new one. Species number six right here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I had just climbed a huge mountain looking for this guy. And this, oh man, I am so excited. Look at that. Here it is. This is the salamander that I have spent all morning looking for. This is the Klamath black salamander. And you know, it's a black salamander, but this guy has such cool coloration in it. It's a lot of brassy bronze flakes. It's really cool with that white speckling. What an amazing, beautiful species. So these black salamanders are part of the genus of climbing salamanders. So you may have heard of the arboreal salamander. That is a salamander that can often be found in trees. We see it climbing on walls and stuff. Green salamander is another one of those climbing species, but green salamander is on the East Coast and uh, is in like granite areas. But this, I don't think um, I've ever heard of black salamanders climbing up trees and things like that, but they're part of the same genus anyway, that climbing salamander family. So very cool to finally get this guy. This is my second lifer of the trip, species number, uh, what is it, five, six? No, species number six. So very exciting, let's go. Gave you a lot of water because it's hot, but slip back under your rock, stay protected. Oh, look what we have here. We have, oh, I meant, it's, it's hard to see. Uh, we have another black salamander. That's cool, but this one is a lot smaller. Look at that. But definitely still got a lot of that very neat brassy coloration to him. Uh, greenish brassy, but we'll put him right back because we already saw one. So bye fella. Go back under your rock. Oh, this might be one of the most interesting flips of the day, um, or even of the whole video. We have two salamanders here right next to each other, and they are different species. This is that Klamath black salamander that we've seen a, uh, a couple of now. There are a couple that I didn't even show. And this is the Del Norte salamander. But look at that reddish coloration. We did not see that um, in the other individuals that we flipped. So really cool to get both of these guys together uh, so you can really see uh, the difference. Awesome. All right. I guess I will show you one more black salamander. This one is definitely the smallest one we found. So there are in all sizes up at this one location, but we've got more to try to look for. So I think this will be the last rock we flip and then on to a new site. The seventh salamander is right here, but it's almost impossible to see. In this little crack here, is a wandering salamander. Now, this is another one of the climbing salamanders, but this one actually is often found in the redwood trees, 
climbing up trees in crevices like this, and that's why I needed to shine with a flashlight in order to find it. One of the really cool adaptations of these salamanders is that they are known to like jump from trees and actually glide. They spread their legs out, they use their tails, and they can actually slow down their descent. So a really cool thing, um, I've seen like a research video of it. It's definitely worth uh, looking for online. But yeah, that's species number seven. Uh, I'm sorry we can't get that great of a look, but you can see he kind of looks similar to uh, that Plymouth black salamander, but he's got much more of a pattern to him, uh, more of this like clouded pattern. And he's actually very closely related to the clouded salamander that is actually further north and uh, out of range for this video. Now what's also cool is this stump actually has a bunch of these salamanders in it. So I took a look at a bunch more cracks and uh, there's one in here. Uh, there was one uh, in uh, one of the cracks over here. I don't remember. Oh, it was, he's in here, but pretty much uh, this stump seems to be home to at least six of these wandering salamanders. Oh, nice. Check this guy out. This is another one of those wandering salamanders, and we can see it much more clearly than before. You can see it's got a very mottled back. Um, what an interesting coloration to it. Now, it was probably in one of the crevices on this tree here and just came out at night to come forage. So very cool to see. Glad we got to get an up-close look at this guy. <gasps> oh, I got one! I finally found one! Oh, check this out! This is that torrent salamander, the southern torrent salamander. Oh my goodness! I have been hiking in streams, picking up rocks and logs, looking for this guy all weekend long. This is the southern torrent salamander. Now they require permanent water and they will never be very far from one of those sources. I want to show you what this guy looks like underneath. He's got, oh, he's got this yellow belly with black spots on it and his his backside is all very dark with more dark spots. This is our eighth species. That is incredible. We are doing really well seeing almost everything that you can find out in this corner of California. Whoa. <laughs> Just, I, I wonder if there are more here. I'm going to keep looking. All right. That was so cool. Go back under your log. See ya. Oh my God, what an incredible weekend. We found almost every species you could find out here. And this is, this is just the creek from that southern torn salamander. We only missed out on a couple things. The clouded salamander, the dun salamander, those just barely range into California from Oregon. So they would have been really tough. The really only species we missed was the rough skin newt. But eight species is pretty incredible. We had really great luck, but it wasn't for a lack of a lot of effort. I'm so glad that you stayed to the end and you watched this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. I'm Greg Schechter, this is Schechter Natural History, and I'll see you in the field. <laughs>